you're already spending that money that's returning you zero dollars anyway and to you don't there aren't a lot of bets of this nature there aren't a lot of bets that have been around for a decade that have the possibility of earning you 10 20 50 100 times what you put in you don't have other bets like that if you did i would say and they were more certain i would say go into them but you don't and so it's almost irresponsible to a certain degree to spend your money frivolously on something else and not put at least part of that into a more longer term bet Hey there, how's it going? This is Peter Hartman here, here with my lovely brother, Tom Hartman. How are you doing, Tom? Good. How's it going, Peter? It's going good. I'm happy that we got a chance to do this. I know we've been trying to bang out this, uh, this video for a little while, talking about Bitcoin. I wanted to have a conversation with you about it because... Look, you know, I'm in the business of giving our attention to great ideas. I want, I want to shine the light of our attention on great ideas so that they make us more efficient, more effective, more capable of pursuing our dreams, right? You know the spiel. And of um, course. Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin seems to me to be something that could be, that could really fit the bill, that could really empower individuals to do more. Now, Bitcoin, if you don't know about that, what that is, it's a, it's a, a cryptocurrency, right? It's um, a digital currency. Is that right, Tom? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the, the the smallest version of what it is. But for the general population, imagine it like a like a digital currency, like a digital currency. And I th really think that it's something that we should give our attention to. But you know, I don't really know that much about it. I know a little bit about it, but not enough. And uh, I actually do a do a video for me, and you did a great video. It's very in depth. It tackled all the, the the reasons against Bitcoin. But I'll tell you, like for a dummy like me, Tom, you know I'm a dummy, right? For a dummy like me. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I say it all the time. I say it every day. It, it, you know, you've reinforced that over and over, and I believe you now. Um, for a dummy like me, I, I you know, it, it was a little too far over my head only because, you know, I, I, I haven't researched this information. So I kind of want to get to Bitcoin, understand Bitcoin from a dummy's perspective, from somebody who, you know, may not be um, uh, invested in, like, knowing every detail of bitcoin right i just like this is something i should do i shouldn't do and tell me why in the most basic terms so i thought i'd have you and uh we can do a little conversation here and you can tell me all about bitcoin what do you think sounds good to me in fact uh i think it's it's totally worthwhile because even someone like me who would be prone to really loving bitcoin i didn't even really come to to the light until very recently so yeah this is worth it that's interesting that you say that, you know, uh, you, you, uh, you said that in your video, it was this idea that, um, it took you a while to be convinced by it. Well, you're a smart guy. Like wh why is this, why is it taking so long to get convinced, you know, to get into Bitcoin? Well, first of all, there was like no need for it, right? Uh, Bitcoin solves a particular problem for cer certain people. Like they want to be able to, the whole thing on Bitcoin is that it's a digital currency that you can trade privately, but I wasn't, you know, doing any transactions that, uh, I needed to do that I couldn't do with a credit card or a bank card, you know, or just with straight cash. So it never uh, fulfilled a need. And I, you know, I felt sort of safe with my money. I never thought, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal if my money fluctuated in value in any given time. You know, in my day-to-day -day life, it didn't affect me. But with the coronavirus and with a, a, a happening and the pandemic and a lot of people losing their jobs and being uncertain about the future, you sort of start thinking about, wait, uh, you know, what is money and where is money coming from and how should I be thinking about the future? And and Bitcoin is made specifically for this type of situation, for like a crisis situation, um, to, to be able to safeguard people's wealth and ability to purchase things. Interesting. Uh, well, you talk about safeguarding wealth. Um, I don't have any wealth to safeguard. So uh, <laughs> what I say, I'm coming yeah, to Yeah, well, this that's the other that. thing, right? It's not like yeah. I'm sitting on, uh, you know, massive amounts of money that I, I need to make sure that I keep in an offshore Cayman account and in Bitcoin and make sure that the G-men don't get it, right? That wasn't my, that wasn't my concern. And so yeah. all these arguments, all these reasons that people had for, for getting into Bitcoin, I, I, I just didn't, I didn't have it. Um, I just bring that up to safeguard enough wealth um, in that, that question has been around now a lot more over the last couple of weeks. And so Bitcoin sort of bubbled up with it. And since, you know, I have nothing but time now with the quarantine, I decided to look a little bit more into it. And then I realized a bunch of the reasons that I had for not being interested in Bitcoin, you know, weren't tenable. Turns out there's a lot of reasons why, actually some pretty good reasons why I should be interested in it. 
And that's a pretty, pretty good point that you bring up there, that we have the time now to invest in, in understanding this. And maybe the topic might have seemed like um, a little too uh, hard to understand or just not in your world. But now might be a good time, especially if you're sitting at home bored, it might be a good time for people to, to sort of dive into what Bitcoin is at least a little bit. And I guess that's the point of this here video. So just tell me, like, what is Bitcoin and why should I care about it? I mean, I know it's a digital currency. I don't mean that. But why should I care about Bitcoin? Okay, well, first, you know, just talking about what Bitcoin is, just so you have a general idea. Just imagine we're all used to having our money online right now, right? Uh, we don't necessarily all walk around with cash. We're fine with having a bank account and money that we, uh, we, we use for a debit card and credit card. Well, when you, uh, when you perform a transaction like that, well, you need, you need to have a bank account and the person who's receiving the money needs the bank account, whether it's a business or a person, right? And mm -hmm. so this money is, is transferred online, but it goes from bank account to bank account. But Bitcoin, imagine that whole transaction, but you don't need any bank account. You can literally just do uh, money to money as if I was giving you physical money. And so this is a digital version of just giving someone a digital digital money that you have to another person's digital wallet. They can just have it as money without needing any any overhead, any bank account or anything like that. So it, it's sort of hard to wrap your head around that. Like, how do I... You, you mean there's an asset out there, there's a digital thing that I could just hand over money to someone as if I'm giving them money uh, in their hands? And that's yes, because what Bitcoin did is that it turned a digital asset, a digital thing that we're all used to copying and sharing and transferring all over, you know, a movie on your computer, you can copy it 10 times. Well, this digital asset, this Bitcoin can't be copied. It's unique. And it's the first unique digital asset. That's why it's so okay. valuable because it cannot be duplicated. Okay, so I get that. That's why it's valuable. Um, yeah. Okay, that that makes sense. You know, it, it, it's that's the reason it's valuable. That's the reason why other people will want it. But if I'm not looking to uh, become like a, an internet drug dealer, I mean, what do I care? There's there's real money, and I got a bank account. It doesn't bother me. So why should I care about Bitcoin? And that's a good point. Actually, the, the market for Bitcoin, the, the amount of Bitcoin that's out there, and the amount of money that's floating around there, is actually not a lot. Uh, almost all big, uh, you know, Fortune uh, Global 1000 companies, you know, are way bigger. You know, Home Depot is way bigger than the market for, for Bitcoin. But what's interesting with Bitcoin is that it's um, the, the value of each individual Bitcoin on, on average over time has constantly gone up. So Bitcoin, when it first came out, was $10, and today um, you can get it for $7,000. So you got to look at that. When something appreciates in value, increases in value suddenly and consistently over time, and it's so easy to get into, you sort of want to take a look at it and go, hey, wait, you know, I'm constantly looking for ways to turn $1 into $2, and this Bitcoin mechanism seems to be a way of doing that. So that's what drew me to it to begin with. And that's what I think other people should pay attention to, that it's a way of not just storing your wealth or transferring money um, in a secure way, but actually increase the amount of money that you have just by owning it. So I increase the amount of money I have just by owning it, like like when stocks increase in value, like I buy the stock and increases in with value. So I know like I when know stocks money. increase in value, if you buy a comic book and it increases in value, if you buy you know any any asset, uh, you, know, so you, you buy something, uh, a baseball card or something like that, and it increases in value over time. You can understand the idea that you can own something that later on someone might want to buy for more money. And mm -hmm. you don't need to necessarily have to understand all the mechanisms under which that happens for Bitcoin. Just understand that it's been going on now for 10 years and it looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on for a lot more. So you, want, you sort of want to try to get in before it gets so expensive that it's not really worth it for you to, to, to play the game. And because the cost of, of, uh, of, basically I see it as a lottery ticket that you buy once and that it never expires and you always have the chance of winning the jackpot, well, you might want to put a little bit of money in that. And I'm not saying you put your whole life savings in there, but it, it's a bet worth considering. So you see it, uh, you do see it as a bet, right? It's not this like sure thing. Yeah, but it's a, it's a bet on technology and on the unknown. Like I really like to think about it in terms of uh, the first smartphone or even um, early versions of the internet or uh, the, the telephone, right? These are technologies that we didn't really understand how it would necessarily affect our day-to-day -day lives in such an intimate way, in such a substantial way for years and years, but it did. 
But if mm-hmm. someone were to were to tell Alexander Graham Bell that a telephone would completely revolutionize the world, like he, people in that time wouldn't necessarily be able to conceptualize it. But yeah. owning a share of Bell at the time, even if you couldn't really understand all the ways that it might change the world, was still a good idea, right? Now in hindsight, you know that was a good idea. Well, that's true for the telephone. That's true for Apple shares. That's true for earlier internet companies. When a new technology comes out that's extremely popular and extremely powerful, and you have an, the ability to own part of that, well, then you are betting on the future. You're betting on the idea that technology can actually be far more expansive than we can anticipate. That's what you're betting on. I love that. That sounds um, that sounds right up happy for changes, Ali. Um, yeah. So how much are we talking about here? How much money do I got to put into this thing for it to be worthwhile to me? See, that's the that's also the part I find extremely interesting. Like, if you had to buy a share of a company, well, the share costs a specific thing, right? If you want to buy a share of Google today, I think it was what fifteen hundred dollars or something like that. You have to you have to fork over that money. Um, if you wanted to uh, to buy um, an asset, a collectible, a piece of art, or something like that, you know, the, it could be a, a pretty hefty sum. You might have to pay a few thousand dollars for um, an expensive comic book that you expect to will increase in value over time. But for Bitcoin. Other than the transaction fee of uh, what you have to do with an owner to buy and sell Bitcoin, so like you can't buy one dollar of Bitcoin, but a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, that's not a consequential amount, because the downside for for Bitcoin is that it could drop to let's say worst case scenario zero dollars. It's very not likely to do that, but let's say that's the maximum downside. Well, the upside of a technological revolution is infinite, right? What would you say is the upside for smartphones or the upside for the internet or the upside for the telephone? Like the the potential benefit, the potential, potential gain, you can't measure it. it. It's in orders of magnitude above what you have. It can be, you can put $100 and get back um, $1,000 in, in a year or two years and that wouldn't be far-fetched. For Bitcoin specifically, I'm anticipating that right now it's trading, let's say around $7,000. I would not be surprised to see it in the next three to four years at a hundred thousand dollars per Bitcoin, right? Wait, and that's a reasonable per Bitcoin. Exactly. So if you had seven thousand dollars worth, you might be able to turn around and sell that for a hundred thousand dollars worth later on. And if you had a hundred dollars worth, well, you could sell it for multiples of that as well. So for a hundred dollar bet, that might return you fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, mm-hmm. why not take that bet? And I'm being, you know, a hundred thousand dollars is. It's a relative at the upper end of a relatively conservative estimate because you have to understand, like at the height of Bitcoin back in 2017, uh, in 2017 when the frenzy was happening, Bitcoin went from like ten dollars to um, to twenty thousand dollars. That was at the peak. Now, when it came down, it only came down. It crashed, right? It lost like eighty percent of its value, but it only came down to like four thousand dollars. Can you imagine that? That an asset that started off at ten dollars hits twenty thousand dollars in its ultimate crash, where it lost so much of its value, it was still worth four thousand dollars. So if you bought mm-hmm. that at twenty bucks, at hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, you're still laughing. Now that's that's years ago, and it's it's continuing to happen now. The value of, of Bitcoin is constantly going up. Now it did go up again. It, there was another another peak, and it went from like four thousand dollars up to ten thousand. And when it crashed, it crashed like um, six thousand. Like it didn't even go down to what it was before, and now it's back up to seven. So. The idea, if at the height when people really didn't understand its value, it hit twenty thousand, it's not far fetched to think that it'll hit twenty thousand dollars again. And if it just went from seven thousand that it is today to twenty thousand, that still would be a great bet, wouldn't it? That would be a fantastic bet. But the conditions under which it can actually increase in value, the more, the more chaotic the world is, the more volatile it is, the more uncertain the future is, the more valuable Bitcoin becomes. I don't want to get into all the technical details, but suffice to say, a lot of countries, a lot of people, and a lot of money might decide to look to Bitcoin as a way of transferring money around the world, of safeguard, uh, safeguarding their assets. You know, you don't have $100 million, but some, some people do. And when they don't feel safe, hold it in cash or have the money in their bank account or something like that, they have to find somewhere to put it. And Bitcoin could very well be one of those places. That's interesting that you say that because, I mean, for the longest time, I wasn't really interested in pushing Bitcoin because one, I don't know much about it. Two, you know, uh, it, it just, 
it, it seems like a gamble, you know. Uh, but now in this environment with the with the crisis that's going on now and people losing their jobs uh, by the millions in North America, like people are going to be scrambling. They're going to need to do something, right? And I know that in order for people to feel a little bit better, uh, even if it's not great, but a little bit better, is to feel like they have some type of control, some type of power, some type of hope in life. And I'm hoping that Bitcoin can be something like that, right? You say I could put in a hundred bucks into this thing, and it could it could yield me more potentially. So, uh, what I what I want is. What I want to know is, you know, is Bitcoin something that can help people? Is it more likely that this time of crisis, let me put it this way, is it more likely that this time of crisis um, will make it that Bitcoin is a better bet? Yes, but I just like to, to say, though, that if you're living paycheck to paycheck or you don't anticipate that your job will be around, I can't in good conscience tell you to take any of your money and put it in there, right? Because you need that money for your for your day to day. But let's say you might have a month, two months buffer, three months buffer, and you you have an expectation that you're still gonna have your job, or that you know you might have a, a you might your job might you might get a pay cut of twenty five percent. Well, then I would say it's still worthwhile to put a little bit of your money off to the side into this. Basically, my rule of thumb is if you're already spending money on any extraneous things right now. Right, you have your you have a, a couple of subscriptions for streaming services. You have you have uh, things in your house that you can you can sell that have just been sitting around for years. You you know, uh, if there's any way for you to take any money that you have on the side that's not really doing anything right now, or cut down your overhead on on things that you don't need to spend. You know, don't go to don't order takeout when you can um, when you can make food at home. If there's anything you could cut down a few hundred dollars to a, uh, a few thousand dollars, then it's worth taking this bet. Because you're already spending that money that's returning you zero dollars anyway, and to you don't there aren't a lot of bets of this nature. There aren't a lot of bets that have been around for a decade that have the possibility of earning you ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred times what you put in. You don't have other bets like that. If you did, I would say, and they were more certain, I would say go into them. But you don't, and so it's almost irresponsible. To a certain degree, to spend your money frivolously on something else and not put at least part of that into a more longer term bet. That's interesting. Um, so, Tom, you're a financial advisor. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. I'm going to tell you that you're a financial right now. Advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. You're telling people. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. You know exactly where they should put their money. You're talking about sure bets. <laughs> um, that's what you're doing right now. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Not at all. The you're... exact opposite. What I'm trying to say is that there is an opportunity here that people have taken uh, advantage of in the past, right? And you've heard that uh, there are bit, uh, Bitcoin millionaires or people who have who took this bet at the beginning when people really didn't know much about Bitcoin. They were successful. And there have been several people since who have done that. And I'm trying to tell you that right now, the conditions exist for another resurgence of that. There's another potential bet that you can make that you, you can get in at the ground floor right now. Now you can get in when it was $10 and it jumped to $20,000, but you might be able to get in when it's, uh, to get a piece of it at $7,000 in order to make, a, uh, to, to watch it go up to 100,000. Like I'm telling you, you don't wanna be sitting there two years from now watching Bitcoin increase in value day after day after day, knowing that you could have gotten in for a hundred bucks. And gotten your taste of this. You you don't want to do that, knowing that you spent a hundred dollars on DVDs uh, on Blu-rays for some movies. Like you you don't want to do that. You want to take the three restaurant uh, um, visits that you, you you would have gone to. You want to you want to sell a couple of your items that are sitting at home that you that you've been meeting to sell but you didn't get around to. You're gonna to want to do that and put it in this thing because if it doesn't work, you lose. <laughs> I mean. You lose nothing. You're putting money in there that you would have lost anyway. That wasn't going to earn you anything. And the benefit is that you can watch something grow over time. So you, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm t telling you that this bet is a once-in-a-lifetime bet, and you don't want to miss out on it because these bets don't come around all that often. They're once-in-a-lifetime. I really like that. Uh, and you're calling it a bet, but it's it's really sort of like an investment, right? A bet kind of sounds well, like you're it, playing the lottery. It's logo. a bet for the people watching this video – Unless you're doing your research into Bitcoin and you're you're getting down and dirty and you understand exactly what the ecosystems are like, uh, those are people who are invested in a thing and have an anticipation of what the returns might be. You don't. 
So for you, it's gambling. It's like bu- buying a lottery ticket. But if I were to tell you there's a lottery ticket out there that you can buy that never expires and that potentially has a huge uh, a huge win for you and anyone else who have it, like it's not a one person. It's not like a lottery where only one person could win. Everyone could win who has this lottery ticket and it never mm-hmm. expires. So if anyone... If, for, you know those uh, um, win for life scratch cards where you can win a thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life, and it costs you what five dollars in order to get the card. Like mm. I thought that was a great deal. <laughs> this Bitcoin blows that out of the water. Yeah, this is yeah. a permanent lottery ticket, so it is betting if you're not doing the research. But I'm saying do it anyway. Bet anyway. Look, that makes sense to me. Um, I think we can uh, wrap this up very soon here. I, I do want to say that, look, if you're a person out there, you're, you're watching this, listening to this, and you're thinking, you're smoking a, a, a pack a week or a pack a day, you know? Here's your motivation to, to cut that, right? Don't you think, Tom? You've got to cut those packs <laughs> exactly. of cigarettes, and every time you would spend that money on cigarettes, put that in, uh, in your account somewhere or in a jar somewhere. Yeah, and it's so and then, easy. Look, you get a CoinSquare take account. That money. You go to CoinSquare.com, yeah. right? You go to Coinsquare.com, you get a or you download the Coinsquare app. That's just what I use. There's all kinds of different apps out there, different accounts that you can have in order to own Bitcoin. Fine. The process is um, uh, requires a lot of information in order to set up your account. It's just like opening up a bank account. Let's say you need, there's a lot of information that you need to provide, but it's not difficult to get. You have this information, so you you download this app, you sign up for the service, and then you transfer. You just send an interact money transfer to your account on this app. So within a couple of days, it's there. And then when you're ready, you buy whatever amount of Bitcoin that you're willing to buy. And then you're in. Then you're mm-hmm. in the bet. It's a, it's a few steps. It, it takes a few days to get on there, but it's not tedious. You could do it from your home right now. And you have the potential. Th- then you're part of this game. You're part of this bet. Um, plus, I like to think of it this way. Like I, I say there's not a lot of uh, you know 20 times uh, return bets that you can make in your life. Well, can I just tell you this quick thing about you know what, how it really, how this whole thing really cemented in my mind that I should take this bet? You mind if I give you the story? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So you think you think of a medical student, right? A medical student, they might uh, leave school with about one hundred and fifty to two hundred, let's say two hundred thousand dollars in debt and right, student loans, and they're doing that because they're they want to be a doctor and they they're going to make on average a doctor makes around three hundred thousand dollars a year, and they work for about thirty six years, right? So let's say they make three hundred thousand dollars a year for thirty six years. At the end, they'll make gross ten million dollars. After taxes, though, that's about $5 million. Right? And let's say we're not counting the mortgages for the house and property taxes or <laughs> divorces or marriages or kids and school and all kinds of expenses. They, they're they making $5 million at the end of that. Well, they bet $200,000 to make $5 million over 36 years. That's a 25 times return. They think it's worth it. They think it's worth years and decades of their life in order to attempt a 25 times return. And I'm telling you, Bitcoin is a 25 times possible return. So if it's good enough for a doctor, 25 times return, to risk their entire school and all their life, why not do the same for yourself? And that's what finally convinced me. It's like, oh yeah, I'm being silly. Just just take the plunge, take the bet. No one's saying put your life savings inside of it. Like I said before, it's just whatever you can spare. You're a good salesman, Tom. Um, uh, you're earning money off of this, right? Somehow you're making money off of me going into Bitcoin. You got some referral program, something. That's right. You're going to get your everyone you know, who buys a Bitcoin. Or... I get fifty percent of that money, so it uh, behooves <laughs> me. No, not at all. Not at all. I don't make anything. There's no referral code for anyone. There's no no one's paying me to do this. Uh, I, I don't work for CoinSquare. I'm just telling you that because I, I want to let you know what I'm doing. So I don't want to tell anyone things that I, I'm not doing myself. You do your own research if you want to. There's time to get into the bet. You don't have to do this today. But it, happy for a change. What we care about is doing what we can in order to make uh, make the lives of those who pay attention to us better. And I I cannot sit on the idea that I'm, I'm excited by taking this bet. I'm excited by being part of this potential future that we can't quantify, that we don't know what it's going to turn into. And I... I, I and it would be, I'd be so remiss if other people didn't take the bet as well. So that's why I'm doing whatever I can to try to convince you with all my songs and dances that, uh, that this is something worth spending a little bit of your time, a little bit of your money on. And well, that's great. Um, 
So you're a financial advisor. Yeah, you're a financial <laughs> advisor and you're letting me know where to put my money and uh, you're liable. If this goes sour on me, you're liable. I can sue you, right? You're taking responsibility over this. It's your years of financial experience that it's that you're leading me down this road. I mean, I'll silence, guarantee that- everyone's money. Anyone who loses money, I'll guarantee it. I'll give you back every single No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Complete opposite. All right. This is all on you. If this fails, it's all on you. You get to decide. Absolutely. If you go, I'm just telling you that the roulette table is a little bit better than the blackjack table. That's all I'm telling you. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> I really like that. I really like that. Yeah. Tal, you've given us a lot to, to uh, think about and chew on here. Um, what, where, what, what resource could I go to find? I know you've got a video that we're going to be putting up on Happy for a Change, youtube.com slash Happy for a Change, where people are going to hear you more, uh, talk more about uh, rebuttaling the reasons why Bitcoin's not a good idea. You, you did a whole video there. Maybe I'll understand it a little bit more now that we've had this conversation. Uh, certainly, it'll be more appealing to people who have more understanding of what Bitcoin is. Maybe I've heard these arguments before. You can check it out there. Uh, but where else would you maybe point or how can I find more information about Bitcoin? So if you just like Google information about Bitcoin and you watch videos or read articles, you'll see a lot of the same things sort of rehash because like there's the camp of people who are for cryptocurrencies and the camp of people who are who are, who are against it. I would say let's not worry about that. In the comments, oh, sorry, in the description of this video, I'll put some links to very specific things to the resources that convinced me because I cared more about the idea of probability of being part of the future and you know how to sort of like contextualize this whole Bitcoin bet. So you know, you can spend a lot of time watching other people talk about it, but I'm going to put very specific things here, you know, diamond and rough videos at the bottom of this video so that you can go check out what actually changed my mind. Tom, this is fantastic. Uh, you made me really think about, um, uh, I remember back in the day, uh, over 10 years ago, working uh, in an office and I did the math of how much I was spending on fast food. Right, and I'm not talking about uh, like healthy fast food either, or fast food I should be eating, but just on fast food. And it came up to a hundred dollars a week, uh, four hundred dollars a month. Just mm-hmm. to think, if I could have taken that four hundred dollars a month and put it into a Bitcoin or something like it, that's uh, right. You know, like you'd be rich now. A very different. <laughs> I'd be <laughs> rich be now. Rich. Instead, yeah. I've got. Um, I thought about all know, the money I spent at bars on happy hours every Thursday with my friends. I mean, I wouldn't have to work again. <laughs> had I put money into Bitcoin then but you know you're not going to beat ourselves up we didn't have the knowledge we had then we have right. it now and so let's do it and you know for the rest of you guys don't don't miss the boat I mean it, it's, and it's I, not staying for long don't miss it yeah I, and I really think like this to me is an opportunity to be motivated to uh, get a hold of your vices and your bad habits, right? You you probably are wasting money somewhere, um, maybe less these days because of how tight things are getting and will be getting. But th- there is money that you're spending in one location that you could be um, investing in something like this that could be more of a payout. And maybe you haven't had the motivation in order. Maybe folks don't have the motivation in order to change that, right, Tom? And, and this Bitcoin thing could be this motivation, right? Some people, they say, money because they're going to go on a trip and to get excited to get their draw out for that to get their savings out for that uh, but here's something where uh, you you might have some maybe it's smoking cigarettes maybe it's drinking alcohol maybe it's eating That's fast right. food where you can cut down on that and then you can tell yourself ah oh, because i cut down on this and i save twenty dollars i save fifty dollars i save a hundred dollars now i can put this mm-hmm. into bitcoin and bitcoin like you say you can buy it fractionally right you can, you can buy small small bits of it you don't have to it's not like you have to Absolutely. save up eight hundred dollars for a stock of tesla you get to buy you can put a hundred dollars into something like this uh despite the fees so exactly um, I and like given what's idea, happening now with the uh you know you're going to start seeing more unemployment you're going to see people hit hard times we're all going to be thinking about what we spend more so maybe before in the good times it was it was harder for us to see that we have to be a little bit more one frugal with our money cautious with our money but more aware of of, you know what this money is doing for us and i think just like it, it affected me i think it's going to start affecting more and more you're going to hear more and more people talk about it and you're going to see as more people talk about it, you're going to see the value of Bitcoin go up. Like if you pay attention, today it's $7,000. It could just as easily be $9,000 by the time you you hear this, you watch this, or when you watch it again. And just just keep in mind that that price is going up because of everything that's happening in the world, because people are being more conscious about their money. So it, it's not too late. Like if you listen to the video now, a month from now, a year from now, it's not too late. You can still be part of that digital future. You could still be more conscientious about your, your money and your spending habits. And like you're just saying, Peter, uh, you know, some people, they don't necessarily 
realize that they're wasting all this money, but I think more and more people now are going to realize where their money is actually going. And I just want you to end that conversation as you're cutting down your Disney Plus subscription. Think to yourself, oh, I could put some of that into Bitcoin. Like you can, and it's not a waste. It was a waste where you were doing it before, but this time it won't be a waste. Tom Hartman, not a financial advisor, your friendly neighborhood uh, Bitcoin advocate. Um, thank you so much for your time, Tom. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Where, where can people find you if they want to find you? You got something? Uh, you put pictures on Instagram. You you tweet stuff. You you post. Stuff. <laughs> I'm a where, I'm, where a, I'm a tweeter. Yeah, you can find You're me on, on the Twitter. Yeah, and, you can find uh, me at, oh, at I love Tom Hartman. That's right. Oh, by the way, for, for for you folks who are wondering, finally I get a chance to say this. Tom's Twitter is I love Tom Hartman, and my Twitter is I love Peter Hartman. And the only reason it's that is because my brother asked me to do that. Okay, I am not. So I, I forced him myself. to do it. I compelled him to do it. He forced me to yeah. do it. And now every time I talk to people, he asks me for my Twitter or my Instagram. I gotta tell them I love Peter Hartman. I love. Doesn't I love it feel Peter. so good? Doesn't it feel no. so good? Doesn't feel good. Yeah, it feels so good. You love it. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin, check it out, folks. Thank you so much, Tom. Ah, and it was fun. Thanks for the questions. Ciao. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked that, make sure to watch the other video that Tom uh, did about Bitcoin. It goes more into depth about all that. And if you have any questions, you can write them down, write them down below. Make sure Tom will be uh, putting the links down there for you. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel because uh, we will be releasing more videos. Um, yeah, we got the comedy stuff. Yeah, we got motivational stuff, but we got some cool stuff for you to uh, give your attention to. Happy for Change wants to empower you as an individual. I believe that the world can be a better place, but only when individuals themselves take it upon themselves to uh, focus on to pay attention to what they value. So thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so that you know uh, when the next video gets uploaded or watch a live show. We're all also over on Facebook at facebook.com slash happy for change. And uh, you can find us everywhere online. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.